Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a ranking video. This is something I normally try to do more often and rank the last 10 or so palettes that I've tried. Normally I do 10, 10 to 11. Um, this is something that I was inspired to do after seeing Annette's makeup corner do it. And I've seen a few other creators do it. Um, but I realized I haven't done this since March. So <laughs> this is gonna be the ranking the last 20-ish palettes that I've tried. Um, it's gonna be a lot. Grab a snack, grab a drink. Um, hopefully not the longest video, but it is a lot of palettes and this was very hard to do. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for any makeup and high-end makeup, which you will see both of here today. Um, and I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to the content I make, be it either, you know, reviewing a new product or just using things that I already know and love. Um, and I, I just try really hard to make thoughtful analytical content. And I have new videos every week, especially right now, multiple, multiple times a week. <laughs> so I'd love to have you subscribe. Okay, uh, before I give it again, if you were curious about the makeup I'm wearing, it is the Trixie Horse Girl uh, palette. I just filmed a video with this. This video, the Trixie video, will be going up probably a week or two before the rest of this. So I will have that linked above. Um, but yeah, this came a couple days ago. This came yesterday. So I just filmed with this um, and now sitting down to do this. The rest of my makeup will be in the description box like normal. Um, this was hard. <laughs> I just kind of forced myself to be like, yes, that, 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 do that, do that, do that. Um, but it was hard. It's not making me look forward to like ranking my favorite things of the year. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to like rank, rank my favorite things of the year or just do like a favorites video. Um, ranking things are hard. Ranking things is hard. I speak English. I have most of my life. You'd think I'd be better at it. Um, okay. Do you want to preface before I start that I like all of these. I love most of these. Um, like I'm going to be doing my yearly declutter probably in a week and then I'll go up December 1st probably. Um, some of these might get decluttered. At least one of these might get decluttered. Um, not because it's bad, but because I don't need it. Um, but I like all of these. I think they're all good. Um, none of these are in the bottom because they're bad. The way I tried to rank them was based on like the things that I grab for the most and that make me the most excited are at the top. And the things that I'm grabbing less, be it like, generally because color story, I'm just grabbing for them less. Those tend to be at the bottom, um, but that's really it. And I'll explain why I rank things as I go and I'll explain what I bought and what I got in PR and all of that. Um, but I do like all of these. <laughs> But just at, and as as a as an autistic Libra with OCD, things like this are hard. So I hope you appreciate that I'm ranking like 22 palettes. That is the most I've ever had to rank, and it was difficult. Okay, so coming in in last place for number 22 is going to be the Kosas Undressed palette. So this was sent to me in PR, and I'm very thankful that I do get PR from Kosas from time to time. And I do think this is a good palette. I just don't need it. It's just an all matte or almost all matte neutral palette. Um, it's really well done. I think the formulas were nice to work with. I've used this a bunch because I really wanted to see how the formulas worked. It only has one shimmer, which is kind of a warm copper and a fairly subtle one, not my favorite shimmer. Um, and it's kind of a weird choice for the palette. I feel like something more neutral would have been better or just kept all matte. Um, I don't love the shimmer, but the mattes were all really great. And I think this is a good palette. I don't need this. This is probably one that I will declutter to my sister-in-law. She saw it and she was like, oh my God, that's perfect. That's all the colors I want on an everyday basis. Those are like, that's my perfect palette. And to have her that excited about it, I feel like means that she should get it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, but I think it's a nice palette. It's $40. I think if you were gonna buy this, if you wanted a good staple neutral palette and you liked the size and at color story of this, I think it's a good choice. I probably wouldn't spend $40 on it, but 
you know, if you got it on sale, Black Friday or Sephora sale or something, um, I think it's a good palette. It's, you've got some kind of cool tones, you've got some warmer tones, more neutral tones, and it goes light to dark. I think it's a nice palette, um, but it's just, you know, a small, mostly matte palette. Not my favorite, but still nice. Okay, so the next couple, I feel bad putting, actually all of these I feel bad putting near the bottom, but they have to go somewhere. Um, and I can't just have a bunch of things tied at like fifth place. <laughs> um, the next one is gonna be the Trixie Cosmetics Laganja palette. Um, and this is strictly a color story thing. I like this, I have used this quite a few times um, this summer mostly. Um, I like that it's a neutral slash color palette. It's kind of rainbow. So you've got this little green quad here, this neutral quad here, and then the trans colors right here. I think it's really pretty. I've grabbed this a bunch for specifically like the yellow shimmer or the green mattes. The neutral mattes are nice. The shimmer is nice. You can get an easy neutral look here. It's definitely more for someone with Laganja skin tone and not mine. Um, like the undertones are a little pink, but I think it works really well. It's just not a color story I'm grabbing for that much, but I don't regret having this. I really like it. And I, this yellow is amazing. So I have grabbed it specifically for this yellow more than anything else. So again, congrats Laganja for the collab. I think this is, it's a really nice palette and I love the, the like packaging of it. Um, and the, the shades are great. I did, in my green video, I did swatch some of these and these and like compare. These are really great formulas. Um, so it's mostly just the greens that I've been grabbing it for and I haven't been in the mood for colorful shadows that much. I think as we move forward, you'll notice I'm not in the mood for super colorful makeup lately. This, this whole year, I've used to say, you know, I'm a sucker for indie makeup and colorful makeup and I stopped because I just, I do like colorful makeup and I do wear colorful makeup at least once a week, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I've moved more towards neutrals or like a spicy neutral. Um, and I think you'll see that reflected in the, the rankings. The next palette is one that I also got in PR and this is the Warlock palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. Really like this palette. Um, I have a video on, I think everything here, um, especially the shade. I've been grabbing it for this shade multiple times. Again, it's just more colorful than I've been wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. But when I want these colors, it's really great. And this, this is the kind of, this like green, goes from like an emerald green to this like antique gold. This is not a colorful look shadow for me. Like some neutral mattes in the crease, like some brown or bronzer. And then this, I wear that to work. And I have grabbed this decent amount for that shade which you can buy as a single. And I've used all the shades in here. I think they all work well. I'm just not in the mood lately. Who knows as we move into the like the gloomy fall weather. I think the winter I want color more because it's one, I want grungy tones and like that like easy smudgy whatever look. That's kind of my go-to in general the last few years always has been, but it's really gotten so. But uh, when it's like gloomy and gross, colorful makeup makes me happy. So you, I might want more come January. <laughs> okay, coming in at number 19 is gonna be the Melt Electric palette. A lot of people didn't like this palette and I actually like this one a lot. Um, I really like the warm and cool tones. I like that it's a little bit more on the buildable side and I was tempted to put it higher up, but there were just other things that I like and I use more. Um, really easy to get a daily friendly look with like the peachy tones. I really liked Magic Mush as a shadow. I'm a sucker for a green. Um, when I've done a blue smoky eye, I really wanna use Galactic Love soon. I think I might use that this week to work. Um, and I think Far Out and Reefer are really pretty. You can't quite see here, but there's a little bit of a green. It's like green taupe right here. Really love those. Those are the two I've used the most. Um, but yeah, I think I might need to use Galactic Love this week. Really do like this. I like Melt's formula. I think people complain about them being inconsistent. I haven't found too many inconsistencies and I found this to be 
a little bit more on the buildable side, which some people hated, but I actually think makes it more approachable. The next palette is going to be the Gourmand Girls Haunted palette. I was sent this in PR as well. I do have a video up with it, and I really like this. It's just, again, color story. I haven't been reaching for these tones that much. When I've grabbed this palette, it's been for the greens again. It's been for like the olive tone and this green. And yeah, I think my one complaint is I wish this shimmer was gone. <laughs> I like this one, but I wish there was like a more olive -y shimmer instead of this tone of green. Um, I really like this apparition shade right here. Um, yeah, I just think there's maybe a couple shadows I'd swap for a different color, and that's why it's here. It's also just a fairly colorful palette, but who have I become that I'm putting the colorful palettes at the bottom? I mean, there are some colorful palettes at the top, too, but, and you'll see those. Um, but, yeah. Okay, next... And I'm starting to second guess myself a little bit. <laughs> is going to be <sighs> like I said, like I've said before, these rankings are hard, and this could change really easily to be something else. Um, actually, I might be changing my mind right now. No, I'm sticking with <laughs> what I picked. Okay, the next one is going to be the uh, Odin's Eye stone and rock palette. I thought this would be near the top because it's greens and I love greens. Um, I really like this palette. I will say one of the shades, uh, this one, High Spirit, does have some hard pan and doesn't really want to pick up, which is frustrating. Um, I really like this. It is a very green palette and I do recommend this if you want an all-round green palette because you've got some warmer greens, you've got some cooler greens, you've got some neutrals. Um, some of these pull, like, cheer is just blue on me. Um, Splendid is a really pretty sparkly back. I want to use that too. I've just been in the mood for, like, a smoky, grungy, sparkly look or an all-matte, like, liner look lately. Um, but yeah, a couple of these greens pull a little more blue on me, like, cheer, because I've been because of my olive undertone, if there's any blue in a shadow, it pulled blue. Um, and the fact that this shade has hard pan and this one is a little bit, um, and this one is like more sagey mint than I really go for. I just haven't grabbed this as much as some of the other ones, but it is really pretty and I think the quality is nice, um, despite this one shadow. I mean, it's only part of it that has hard pan too. I know some people have complained that Odin's Eye palettes get hard pan a lot. I think that's the second shade in all like eight I have that has any bit of hard pan, so I haven't had that many issues, but it is a little frustrating. Okay, so the next one is going to be the Melt Nightmare Before Christmas Halloween Town palette. I really like this. I have two videos up with this, maybe? I have used this a lot lately. Um, I really like this. I think the shades Oogie Boogie and Gone Away are really nice. Like, I've worn just bronzer and those two to work a few times. Um, and this, this shade here, Warm Sword, is so pretty. It's the, Melt has changed the shimmer formula for the better. This is just a really nice shimmer. I really love it. The mounts all worked well in this. I think the blues weren't the best blues I've used, but they weren't bad. It was like, you know, some blues I have are like an A+, plus, and these are like a B. They're good. They're just not as good as some other ones I have. Um, but I really like this. I, uh, I want to keep using it, so it's hard to put it this low, because I want to keep grabbing for it. But there's others in here that I've used more, or I want to grab more, and I keep grabbing more, so... Um, the next one in here is going to be the other Melt Halloween, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, wow, Christmas Town palette. I like this more than the Halloween Town, I think. I really like this palette. Um, I'm not going to really use the red that much. I do need to use it again just to, you know, form my opinion on it. The shimmers in here are so pretty. 
so pretty. I like these topper shades. I've used them a hand, I've used them each a couple times now. I like that it's got some more topper, like these are more of a sheer, like this shade, this shade, and this shade are more of a sheer topper. This one's really bright. Um, I just really like this. Uh, and it is still available, um, you know, it's new. The matte white in here was really nice. I have zero complaints about this. I think I had, this purple wasn't my absolute favorite purple from Melt even. I think they've done better purples, but it's still pretty and worked well. Again, like a B instead of an A. Love the packaging. I love the whole collections. Um, and on a daily, like everyday basis, yeah, I'm just leaning towards some of the other ones. Um, the next palette I got in PR, and it is the Nomad Royal Europe palette. I really like this palette. I think the packaging is beautiful. I love this like paper cutout in layers, really beautiful. This isn't my favorite Nomad palette, color story wise, because I'm just not reaching for jewel tones lately. But all of the shimmers in here are multi-chromes and they're all really beautiful multi-chromes. And that's what pushed this above like the Melt palettes and the Odin's Eye palette, like some of those other ones. I these all, all these mattes work really well together. You get like a smoky jewel tone look every time, which I really do like. And at the beginning of the year when I got this, I was wearing it more, but I just haven't grabbed it that much since just because I'm not in the mood for jewel tones. I don't know what's happened to me. <laughs> um, I'm in the mood for something more like what I'm wearing now. Um, so that's why it's ranked lower than a lot of other ones, but it's ranked higher because of the multi-chromes. These are all really beautiful. I think this is a great palette. Um, and if you are ever gonna pick up a Nomad palettes, there's lots of people with discount codes out there. Mine is Bones. It's always in the description box. I don't earn any money from that, but always use a discount code, save yourself some money. Don't pay full, full price for anything. Okay, and then the next palette is another one from Nomad. And it is the Okavanga Savari palette. I really love this. It's felt, it looks like kind of a leopard print. It's really beautiful. And it's their first like neutrally palette, but it's still like colorful at the same time. I think this is a great palette. I've recommended this one a lot and I still stand by that. Um, you've got a warm neutral row, a green row and a cool tone row. If you would have, last year, I probably would have grabbed the greens the most, and I have used those a lot. But the shade that I'm grabbing for the most in this is the, the Mighty Buffalo shade. Like, what? I mean, it's beautiful. And it's got a lot of sparkle to it that's really special. But I think this one ranked a little bit lower just because the Zebra shade, the Crocodile shade, and the Lion shade, they're really pretty, but they are really firmly pressed. So they don't pick up as easily and they're not as high impact as some of the other ones in here, even from Nomad. So that's why it's a little bit lower, even though I love the color story and the quality is great. Really like this. The next palette is another neutral-ish palette and it is the Fantasy Cosmetica Fighter palette. Again, I got this one in PR. I really, I think this was the first one I got in PR from them. Um, I bought the rest. Really, really like this. It is neutral, but you've got warm neutral, cool neutral, and then a mix in, in the shimmers. I This was their first neutral palette, and I think they did a really great job with this. I really love this. I also have a code with Fantasy Cosmetica. I think it's also just Bones. That one is an affiliate code, so we're doing a commission from it, but I love this palette. I need to wear Might to work this week. It's kind of like... Uh, dark burnt purple with gold specks in it. It's so pretty. Um, I just love this. You've got some multi-chrome sparkly shifty shades in here. I think this is like the perfect small neutral palette because you've got warm, cool. You can do it all. You can go really sparkly. Um, I really love their formula. Love the new packaging. Everything's got a stained glass kind of design. Really great. Okay, we are in the top 10. And I've only been filming for 22 minutes, which is not bad. 
especially since I need to go eat dinner and run errands after this. The next palette is another one from Odin's Eye, and it is the Jewels and Gems palette. Really, really like this, and I said in those videos that I liked this more than the green one, and I stand by that. Um, you can see some of these shades have kind of taken a beating, like this one I've really dug into. I love this. It is neutral, but cool neutral, but also still kind of colorful. It's straddling that line. I'm taking that stupid plastic thing off. It's straddling that line between neutral and colorful, and I've been into cool tones more this year. So you've got some kind of bluey tones, you've got some purple, some mauves, you've got this really beautiful rosy shade, you've got this really beautiful green, gold, bronze shifty shade here. This one, Rhapsody, is also another really beautiful shifty shade. Uh, I just really love this. This is up there in my Odin's Eye ranking with the Christmas palettes from last year, which ranked at the top. So we'll see what happens this year when I rank them. I don't think I'm going to be, they just announced today the new Christmas palettes, and I don't think I'm going to get them. They're too pastel for me. Um, so I will I was waiting on that to, to film my Odin's Eye ranking, so I will be filming that sometime soon, and that will go up next month as well. Okay, and the next palette is, I think, the last one I got in PR. Everything else here I bought myself, and it is the Nomad Ghost Town USA palette. I love this. This is exactly the vibe that I'm going for lately. Muted, like desaturated, colorful slash neutral tones. You've got these neutral browny tones here, these more blue tones here, and these more green tones here. My favorite colors, literally neutral, blue, and green. You've got beautiful like copper, rose gold, purpley, blue, green, gray. You've got all kinds of shimmers in here, and I think this is the best shimmers Nomad has done. I just realized they also sent me their travel six pan palette. It's part of the Nomad Air Collection. I forgot to include that in here. That's great quality. Color story, like light, medium, dark mattes, light, medium, dark shimmer, same shimmer quality as this. That would probably be somewhere in the middle just because it's a six pan palette and you can't do too much with it, but the quality is amazing. So forgot about that, but that, that would go somewhere in the middle just because it's only a six pan and you're only gonna get a handful of looks out of it. Um, this is a big one. You get lots of options. You can do lots of different looks with this. And I think this has their best shimmer formula they've ever done. I think this was, this is an impeccable palette. I love this. It was hard to put this even at number nine. Um, but there's other ones here that I'm just grabbing more. <laughs> and I feel bad. Okay, palette number eight. And this might surprise some people. It's going to be volume two from the new House Labs Holiday Collection. I really like this, and it again, it's a small palette, so it's a six pan. Can't do too many looks, like you can definitely get more looks out of this, especially for the price. Like these are similarly priced, like this is like $50, 40 something, and this was like 49. The reason this ranks higher though, is just the formulas are so good. The formulas are so good. Like, I, it's one of those where I keep thinking about the formulas and the colors when I'm not wearing it, and that's what put them higher. The palettes that are all in the top 10 generally, but, like, especially this top, like, 8, 9, are ones that, including this, are ones that I just keep thinking about. Like, I'm at work thinking, what am I going to wear tomorrow? I'm like, ooh, I want to wear that. Ooh, I, want, ooh, I can't wait to use that shadow again. You know, I mean, a lot of these, there's specific shadows, but, well, you know, I'm babbling. <laughs> I really love this. So you've got a light, medium, and a dark matte. The mattes in here are some of the best I've used. Like, they feel like a cream to powder, that kind of a matte formula. Well, I adore it. This uh, really bright fuchsia shade is on par with a Pat McGrath metallic. Like, you can put this on the lid, blend the edges. It's really bright and shiny, but also still smooth and creamy and blendable. This is the prettiest rose gold I've ever seen. And then this olive glitter is more sage than olive, but still really beautiful, especially over like a little bit of bronzer in this. Perfect everyday look, 
just really love it. I have zero regrets for paying $49. Well, I did have a gift card for both of these, but I have zero regrets using that $100 gift card for these. And then the next one <laughs> is gonna be the other House Labs palette. This one, people find, I think the color story for this one is a little more interesting, but I like the mattes in this one more. These are mattes that I wanna wear more often. These are a little bit cool, a little bit mauve -y. These are warm and just like my everyday kind of matte, really beautiful. This shade here is this like white gold to pink iridescent shade that is on par with a lot of indie iridescent shimmers that you can pay like $15 for, really great. And these two metallics, the duochrome is really pretty, like you can see that like pinky red to a gold this one's just a gold. They're just so pretty. The formulas in this are just so good. Like it's ridiculous that they're $49, but the formulas are so good. I, I, they had to be in the top. They're just too good. Next we have a very controversial palette and it is the newest Pat McGrath, the Sunlit Seduction. Well, newest Mothership. She's come out with her holiday palettes, but I didn't buy any of them. Um, because you don't have to buy everything. Um, there were some of the Hollywood palettes that I was like, ooh, that's really pretty, I want that, or I want some shades from the big one, but not enough to buy it, um, because you don't have to own everything. I could dupe it pretty easily, you know, whatever. That's a different video. I really like this palette. I know a lot of people hate it, but I really like it. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. These are really great one and done shades for work. The mattes in here work really beautifully. And the shimmers in here, while not the same formula that we're used to, are still really beautiful, especially this one. I've grabbed this peach gold sparkly duochrome shade so much, it had to be up here for how much I've grabbed the these two normal shimmers and this shimmer. Um, I do have a very long in-depth review of that, so I will link that. I can only link like five videos, so I'll link what I can. Okay, we are in the top five. <laughs> and this has been stressful, but I think I'm, I feel I'm very confident in these top five. So the next one is gonna be the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. This might be higher if it had a couple shades swapped out. I really love this. I really love the wet effect shades. I've used them a lot, um, both for work and just in general. I really love this. I think if like mesh, mesh and stone are not identical, but they're similar enough that I wish one of them was something else and there was something like a little darker. This looks pretty dark, but it's not that dark. I wish there was something a little bit darker. It would make it, one, you could make a really smoky eye, but also it would just be more inclusive shade wise, if one of these was a little different and this was maybe slightly darker, I think it would be more inclusive for skin tones. Um, but it's beautiful. I love these kind of browns and taupes for everyday shades. And then you've got the sparkly wet effect shades. I really, really love this. I, again, it, if you watched this video, you know, I, I was talking about how I love the like terracotta clay shades. You got a couple of those in here. I just think this is one of the best palettes of the year and one of the best palettes Natasha Denona has ever done. And I have a lot of her palettes. There will be a Natasha Denona ranking sometime next month. Um, it's all dependent on if I decide to buy Xenon or not. I might get it during Black Friday and at that point, it, I don't know if I'll include it, but we'll see. Okay. Top four. The next one, it looks boring. I will give you that. And it is kind of boring, but in the best way possible. But the formulas are just really refined and really beautiful. And it's w probably my second most used palette this year. And it is the Byredo Remembrance palette. It's a big mirror. It's reflecting my ring light. Also, the sun has gone down now, so it's fully dark out. I just really love this. You've got some warm neutrals, like you've got an orangey tone, you've got this warm brown here, you've got a rosy brown as well, 
then you've got some more rosy tones here, but they're not like pink pink, they're more rosy. And then you've got like uh, this taupe and this brown, this copper shade is so pretty. This taupe is really pretty. They're just effortless. They look nice on the lid. They look sophisticated. The formula is really nice to work with and just looks nice in person. Um, it's one of those, like when I wear this, I feel confident and people ask me like what I'm wearing because it looks so pretty. Um, and then you've got a couple really sparkly shades like this one. So uh, this is like the best everyday palette that I've tried this year. Along, I think these two are the best like everyday palettes. Great. Okay. The next palette, top three, is tiny but beautiful, and it is the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery Palette. I finally got this almost a year later, and I adore it. Um, I love the formulas in here. I love the textures. I think, yes, this is $60 for this little baby. You know, this was 100 <laughs> This was like 70 um, this was like $40. You know, there's a wide range of prices here, but I love it. You've got one matte and it's a cream to powder. It's a green, I love it. I've worn Magical, this shade so much. I have other, you know, antique olive golds in this stack and elsewhere, but there's something special about this that makes me wanna grab this one over a lot of the others. You've got this really beautiful blue and I love a blue. I really like this. It does pull a little bit more blue than green on me because it's emerald. So there's a little bit more blue there. And then this shade right here, um, Mercurial, is this sheer, like, she describes it as a heather. So it's kind of like a little bit purpley. You can kind of see the base color as I turn it. And then it, it reflects like green, gold, and bright colors. This is what I've used the most, the second most. No, maybe the most. Just all over the lid by itself. Like it makes a great shade on top of this or mixed in with these other ones, but just by itself, just that. Like, I don't want to swatch stuff, but like that, just that all over the lid. So pretty. Uh, I want more for shadows, even the boring ones like Cinnabar. And I want Cinnabar, I want Myth. Uh, and as soon as Vega is back in stock, I want a bit of Vega. So I'll just like look at that. So you can see that little bit of a kind of a pinky plum base. And then it's got yellow, blue, and green sparkle. And it's just, it's just so pretty. Okay, top two. Let me know in the comments if you've guessed the top handful, like the top five. And let me know specifically what you think the top two are. Because if you've been here for a little while and you know me, I'm sure, one, you know what I've tried this year, and two, you know what I like. So I don't think you'll be surprised by these. Um, number two is going to be the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. I have at least one, maybe two videos on this, and I've used it in other things. I love this palette. This is my perfect olive palette. People say it's a green palette. I disagree. It is an olive palette. You've got a teal, which is blue. You've got this more like true olive green. And then you've got like a brown neutral here and a kind of a peachy one here. But overall, all of these like are greenish to yellowish to brown. Like this is pretty brown. This is pretty brown, but they're an olive brown. And since I have an olive undertone, these shades just work so perfect with me. I can do an everyday neutral look that wouldn't maybe maybe not be neutral on someone with like a pink undertone, but on me, I can do an everyday neutral look. I can do a more colorful look. I can have it be a little more subdued. I can have it be super sparkly. The shimmers in here are on par with a lot of indie shimmers that I have, like singles from Terra Moons. I just love this palette so much. Uh, zero regrets buying this at $70. I love it, I've used it so much. Um, it was my most used palette for a big chunk of the summer. Like that and Byredo were like the two that I just kept going back and forth between. And then last, but not least, because it is first place, <laughs> is gonna go to Industrial 2.0. Industrial 1.0, or just Industrial, was my favorite palette last year, and still is maybe my favorite. 
I think maybe that and this are like my favorites, but I love this so much. It's more colorful. You've got, again, a lot of different textures. You've got even more different textures than this. You've got this really beautiful, kind of similar to the Trixie shade that I'm wearing right now. This kind of like, like plummy red base with a blue shift that feels kind of wet. Very similar to what I'm wearing right now on my lid from Trixie, although the Trixie one is, you know, half the price of this. But then you've got this beautiful blue, this orange, this copper, you've got a bunch of like sheer topper shades, you've got some sparkly shades, but then you also got like a brown one and done shade with some gold sparkle in it and like a more gold, ver like a green gold right here. It's just, the textures in this are great, the colors are great. I have fun playing with this and I just think about it. I wanna play with this all the time. So it had to be number one. Okay, <laughs> I feel tired. <laughs> um, I need to clean now and go eat dinner. But yeah, I, these, the ranking, some of the ones at the bottom to middle might change depending on the day, but I feel confident in this right now. And especially at the top six or seven, definitely confident in. So let me know what you think. Did you guess my top five? Did you guess my top two? I'd love to know in the comments. Um, I'd also just love to know what you think of these. How would you rank them? Give me your opinions in the comments as always. And then as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.